And I am happy to turn this over to Ben Mintz, who I think most of you know from NAF. Ben, um, would you please introduce our presenter? Sure, thanks, Molly. Also, thanks for everybody who has joined this morning. And then special thanks to Steve Ward, who is our presenter for putting this together for us. We really appreciate that. Steve has 10, about 10 years experience in welding, but he works for a company called Vectis Automation. Uh, Vectis collectively has over a hundred years of welding experience amongst the group and their team there. So what, what Steve is going to show us today is a, a package custom, let's, say, let's call it a standard custom solution that they came up with using collaborative robots for doing welding tasks. So it's a hardware and software package. Really excited to see, see what, uh, what Steve presents today. Uh, just know that NEF, NEF, NEF has been involved in about 11 of these systems in the last six months. And I think that just goes to show kind of what we see uh, in the industry and the trends that we're seeing are people investing in this type of technology for their factories for multiple reasons. Um, but it's an exciting technology. And thanks for joining us today, Steve. And we'll, we'll keep our time limit to 30 minutes because we, we respect your time uh, and our time. Uh, and then if there's anything we need to follow up with afterwards, we can do that individually on a personal basis. Well, Steve, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Ben. Morning, everyone. Um... As Ben mentioned, I'm with Vectus Automation. I'm the Eastern Regional Manager for Vectus. So I'm based in Greenville, South Carolina, and really cover the whole of the, uh, the East Coast for Vectus. So I'll go through a little bit of the who, where, what, why for Vectus Automation. Uh, I have a case study that we'll go through with one of our customers, uh, and then we'll get into product details and some application details and examples to round it out. So the WHO, um, as Ben mentioned, uh, we're a, a UR certified integrator, um, and we have a team of engineers with over 100 years of combined experience. We came from the traditional welding space and have taken what we learned there and applied it to the, to the collaborative space. I'm based in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, the what is really a, a cobot welding tool, uh, so the the key pieces of it is the ease of use, portability, quick deployment, and cost effectiveness. And we add some peace of mind with a return policy and rent to own options as well. And then really the why, as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, the AWS estimates there will be a 400,000 welder shortage in the US by 2025. So we see this really as a way of, of man plus machine filling that gap. It's not intended as a, a lights out operation to just replace the manual welder. It's to be able to, to extend the capability of the, the welders that manufacturers do in fact have. So some of the benefits of automation done right, um, really the, the key pieces is softening the blow of skilled welder and skilled programmer shortages. Uh, we see it as a big trend, even within companies that have automated, um, having shortages of people skilled in being able to program those automated systems, improving quality and consistency, improving safety and reducing operator fatigue or removing monotony from their tasks, leveraging flexible automation for smaller batches, sub-assemblies, packing operations, and then ultimately lowering manufacturing costs, driving uh, greater business potential through either increased capacity or reduced lead time and cost and reducing all in costs of automation So I've got a, a case study that we'll watch here on the next slide, but it's from many, uh, MT Solar. They manufacture solar mounting structures in Montana. They had looked at traditional automation systems and it wasn't really the right fit for them um, based on the inflexibility. They had a very high mix, low volume type application. Um, and we're really looking for a, a lower risk way of being able to get into automation. So the rent to own option was highly valuable to them. Montana Solar designs and manufactures mounting structures for solar modules of all sizes. A universal robot equipped with the Vectis Cobot welding tool now handles a wide range of welds, enabling quick changeovers, 
and Optimize Production. It was very interesting. We we're hiring this new robot and it shows up on the truck. I walk out of the office and I've got employees that are already like cutting shrink wrap and they're getting ready to set something. Hey, I, I, I want to play. Within a very few minutes, we had the thing set up. You know, we were we were welding some parts. We were getting, we had production parts running by the afternoon. We're always looking for ways to automate processes, handling the seasonality. When it's hot, we can't find enough people quickly enough to take care of the ramp up that we need. If you got one of the operators saying you need to look into robotics, you got a reason you should be doing something here. We looked at conventional robots. They were wonderful at doing the same item really, really fast. We have many products that go together. Think of us as maybe a solar IKEA, if you will. If I don't have all the other parts that go with it, I can't ship anything. By doing a Vectus Universal Robots, I was able to program it to handle many different parts together. I can do three of this and 12 of that all in a package, and presto, I've got a shippable part. And we have found that to be much easier to get an ROI on. The tangible ROI is fairly clear. One and a half, two year ROI just on labor savings. The intangibles I think are actually more valuable than the tangible ROIs. And the overall net improvement of the shop, it could be very, very short. It really, really has made a difference for our team. And there was a lot of risk there. But by being able to start with a system that I could rent or lease, well, I can afford that. If this doesn't work, I can get out of it. But I can definitely move toward ownership. So we founded Vectus because we saw a continuing need for manufacturers to have access to lower cost, easier to use, more flexible, and lower risk welding automation. The all-in cost of doing a Vectus Cobot welding tool when compared to traditional robotic welding cells can be 25 to 40 percent less when you factor in freight, uh, time to production, training, setup, and install and commissioning. There's been a stigma that collaborative robots can't go into heavy industrial environments but our customers are welding uh, thin gauge materials all the way down to 16 gauge all the way up to half inch and thicker materials right out of the box I'm by no means a certified welder I'll just grab any of the welders and I'll say okay I'll run the pendant you go ahead and run the torch where do you want the weld to start the stop what angle do you want it to do and we've fought through some very advanced welds I'm a welder by trade uh, but I didn't know anything about robots, and, I, and I'm not uh, very computer savvy. I was really surprised at how easy it was uh, to figure it out. One of the things is we were looking at conventional robots versus the universal robots was the cage and the safety guarding around the machine. And with the collaborative robot, my guys truly do have never feared at all working with it. They're able to work right there beside it. It is exactly like having a welder there, but the guy go around and uh, reload the parts and uh, hit the cycle. As far as improving weld quality and taking operator error out, a lot of these little parts are kind of monotonous. The robot, it does remove the variance, and that's the name of the game when you're talking pace production. We've built up to 7,500 parts over a winter uh, one time, and for an operator to sit and do that, you can tell where they got sick of it. Our customers are always excited when we tell them, hey, you know, that part was welded on a robot. They go to put it on, and it looks exactly the same as the last one. The welds are, you know, high quality. We are competing on a global level. So being able to have a robot involved in our operation that can quickly be transitioned to different tasks is paramount to our success. We're able to bring big industrial and big corporate quality and scalability together with the innovation and the nimbleness of a small company, and we think it's an extremely powerful combination. We find that we get a real sparkle in people's eye when we say, we have a robot on the crew. It's definitely made us able to attract a higher quality level of employees and better quality talent to our team. We've got a shop full of people that'll come up with ideas just based on their exposure to it of what we can use robots for. Adding a robot, and especially a universal robot with the Vectus combination, adding that to a team, I have and will continue to recommend it. I think the universal robots system there with Vectus is the best one I've run across. So there's more on that one too. Uh, we were featured in the Welding Journal magazine in October. Uh, so you can read about that if, if you have a copy still laying around from October. And then uh, we'll also have an article coming up on aluminum welding in the February edition of the Welding Journal as well. So jump over into the, the product details. Um, this base system itself is, is built around a 30 by 48 weld cart. Uh, by standard, we use the UR10E, 
which is a 10 kilogram capacity 51 inch reach robot. Uh, they have three other size variations, but for the welding application, we've really found the, the 10 E to be kind of the, the best fit from a overall reach envelope standpoint. It by standard comes with a Miller Envision 352 power supply and Miller wire feeder, and then an air-cooled torch. We have options to go up to a 450 amp welder with a water-cooled torch, and then also a push-pull solution for uh, softer wires like aluminum. And really the, the base foundation of it is really built around that portability, versatility, and flexibility. So you kind of have a very small footprint at that three foot by six foot footprint. With the standard system, you're not required to have three phase power. The welder itself will run on 240 single phase uh, with the option to go from 208 to 575 three phase. As you go up to that 450, it does require three phase power though. The real core of uh, ease of use is the software that we wrote uh, to be able to what you are would consider the cap um, and it's really the user interface that sits on their teach pendant. Um, we had done it around a graphical programming interface to be able to get rid of the, the text based code that most traditional automation systems use to be able to make it much more intuitive. We house all of the information or the program tasks that you would need within our cap so you're not having to jump between menus to be able to set up a program. And then we also give visual context as you're programming to be able to show what each of the lines are doing and what the points are so that you have some reference. You're not having to look back to a reference manual while you're programming to be able to know what you're doing and what each of the points are for. Within the teach pendant as well, we give total weld and weave control. So you have control of all the weld process parameters along with weaving parameters directly from the teach pendant. We also ship the system with a baseline weld template uh, tailored typically to the end customer's application, but as that changes, we can send additional data. Um, those baseline templates can be modified and then saved out as unique data. And also any WPS or PQR standards that an end user has can be uh, ported into it and then saved out as data. So that way the robot runs on the WPS and PQR standards. We've also added quite a few tools to be able to speed up programming, notably tack, uh, a pattern and stitch. The stitch tool is to be able to uh, automatically program stitch welds. Patterning is to be able to do offsets. And then the tack is just for uh, doing tack welds. Had Eve? Yep. Yeah, we have a question, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. And it asks the following from, from Joe Peterson. Thank you for the question. Does your software or the UR software support multiple robots so you could have a cobot holding parts or loading jigs in sync with the robot welding? You wouldn't be able to quite do in sync um, from a like motion coordination standpoint, but you could certainly interface with other UR robots to be able to do pick and place type operations. So uh, have it say a separate UR robot that loads a fixture and then our system would be able to weld it, uh, but you wouldn't quite be able to get to full coordinated motion. That's one kind of place that you really see some value in traditional automation still as you get into the more complicated tasks like that. So we've also added um, advanced functions as well, including touch sensing, multi-pass, and then we're also in the kind of last development here of uh, through arc seam tracking as well. Uh, the picture there on the right hand side is a really good image reference of what that stitch tool is doing. Uh, so it's really being able to set up the weld path as being the entire you program, the entire joint, and then just input in what the stitch weld parameters are. And then the robot itself calculates where all the starts and stops should be. So you're not having to individually program each of those stitch welds. It's taken care of that automatically. So there's kind of two really big benefits to that. First being it's a lot less programming. And then second, those stitch welds end up being exactly the same length with the exact same 
spacing between them. So you get a much better appearing stitch weld as well. So we work on an all-in system price. We include shipping with the system, and then uh, it comes with a 30-day return policy. The typical lead time for us is right around four weeks. We have longer-term financing options starting at about two years out to seven years, and then have shorter-term rental or rent-to-own options as well. Uh, we do have a uh, we do maintain a limited fleet for that. So time to time, it can be difficult to get a rental, but try to work with folks as well as we can to, to get a rental in their hand if they're interested in that. As you heard from Travis at MT Solar that they were cutting shrink wrap in the morning and in production by the afternoon. Josh Rudkin at a local customer to us in Colorado, RCI Metalworks tripled their production by leveraging the Cobot welding tool. And then uh, Dean and Perry of Knot Singer it started contributing the day it was delivered. It didn't make sense for us to invest in robotic welding until Vectus had changed the game. And then last is a, a local customer for Neff. Um, they had bought a system in July and then turned around and bought four more in about August or September. And then they turned around again here a couple months ago and bought another six. Um, and that's in Pennsylvania as well. So on the application side of things, we really do quite a bit on the upfront side of it to ensure that applications will be a good fit for our system. Um, on the reachability side, as I kind of mentioned before, the UR10E has a 51 inch reach. Uh, we add about 17 inches to that from the, the tool flange of the robot out to the end of the wire. Um, but there's some limitations to that. If you, if you have a big sphere that's that radius, uh, we can't necessarily reach everything in it because we've got to maintain good torch angle. So as we get into those larger parts, uh, we'll look at them in an offline simulation software to be able to check all those reaches and confirm that we can get good torch access um, for a specific part geometry. So this is kind of highlighting some of what we've done on some other parts of where as you're reaching out, you're not necessarily able to maintain good torch angle uh, at the outer extents of the uh, robot reach. They have the capability to do multi-zone or multi-part setups, uh, really driven around higher utilization, being able to keep that welding arc going the entire time as an operator is loading and unloading another station. Uh, one thing that's really unique on the collaborative robot side of things is that that multi-zoning can be really pretty endlessly flexible to a, an end user's application. Um, so it can be very uh, well tailored to the actual customer's parts. It's a good highlight of the importance of consistency and gaps. Uh, this was a, a local customer to us that they have this bent part. So you can see there's a fairly significant gap in the upper left corner of the unwelded part and the welded result. And the key to that really is the consistency of that joint. Robots inherently don't know if the part or the weld joint has changed. Uh, so the most that we can, or the, the most important thing to do is to maintain that consistency from upstream processing to make sure that the parts that are being fed to the, to the cobot are, are consistent. So good examples of some slam dunk applications. We do a lot of small brackets. Uh, flanges, plate to tube, uh, those types of things. It's really the, the pallet apart monotonous tasks that uh, manual welders really don't like doing. Um, so it's a, it's a good hand in hand, to be able to free up the skilled welder to be able to then do more complicated tasks that really require their skills. So good overview of some system versatility. Um, you see most of the parts are kind of located on the cart itself sometimes hang over the part it's kind of noted in the upper right hand photo there and then also have done quite a few of larger parts uh, like what's in the upper left hand photo that the that customer had an existing fixture for their larger part they rolled our cart up next to it and then programmed their part with the robot leaned over the edge of the cart good application photos i'd say most notably the lower two photos uh, is multi-pass um, and then the cut and hatch of uh, 
some application development that we had done. Some other good examples, uh, aluminum wheel. Uh, that'll be what's actually highlighted in that Welding Journal magazine next month. And then the video on the right-hand side there, highlighting both the tack and pattern tool for a, a local customer, again, to the, the headquarters out in Colorado. That was taught off of just two points, the inner and outermost rings, and using the pattern tool to be able to set up how many iterations there were in the middle. And you can, I mean, imagine how much time savings there is in that on not having to program every single one of those tack welds of every single fin to every single ring. So with that, I think we can open it up to questions. Yeah, we do have one. Um, Charlie is asking if you're able to outfit with a TIG welder. Yeah, we currently don't have a solution for TIG welding. Um, there's quite a few applications out there that we can certainly look at from a, a TIG to MIG conversion. There is still a minimum bead size on the MIG side of it. So autogenous TIG isn't a great application. Or if you're really looking for just absolute minimum bead size, it's not going to be a good fit for us. Uh, but there are some applications out there that when you're really just looking for the visual consistency or aesthetics that you get from TIG, uh, Cobot MIG can be a potential option there. Okay, thank you. I'll give everyone a moment if there's any final questions to go ahead and go ahead and put those in the Q&A box so that we can get those questions answered while they're doing that. Steve, do you have any final thoughts or comments? I'd say the only thing I would really uh, add is obviously feel free to reach out to myself or to the NEF. Uh, we're really here to, to help you. Um, and then all of this too, that any of the applications that aren't necessarily a good fit for cobots, if you're really looking for the lights out operation of, of welding, that is a certainly great partner to work with. Uh, they do a lot with ABB Robotics to be able to provide traditional systems for uh, that is more uh, well fit for high speed production and those types of applications. Okay, thank you. Charlie's follow up question is will the robot make any changes during the weld if the part starts to change as warping while welding? Will it monitor weld parameters and make on the fly changes? It won't make on the fly changes to weld process parameters itself. Um, with through arc seam tracking, we'll be able to make some path variations. So if you have a part that's distorting while welding, uh, through our seam tracking, we'll be able to allow the, the robot to be able to follow the joint and stay in the joint as that part distorts slightly. We do have the option to be able to change weld parameters on the fly. So if you know, say you're, you're, you're welding down one side and you're running, I don't know, maybe a, a 3 8 speed and you need to wrap around the corner and reduce that down to a quarter inch uh, with the arc lit, you can change those weld parameters, but that's programmed in from the get-go, not necessarily being adapted automatically. Steve, uh, there's a question here, if you could share on anything that has to do with the investments, whether it be owning or renting, just to give some people some idea about a budgetary for, for a, a standard system. I don't know if that's something you can provide. Sure, I mean, across the board, we're under $100,000. Uh, there's a little bit of price variation depending on kind of the standard system versus, uh, the heavy duty or the aluminum package, but really under a hundred thousand is a, a good budgetary number right around that hundred thousand, but under the mark. Thank you. And if anyone in the audience would have questions, uh, we also have some representatives from universal robots on the call. Obviously one of the questions was about automated loading. So, so uh, feel free to ask questions that might talk about you are as well. Um, we're definitely here to help you take away from this, how you can uh, deploy automation successfully. A question, another one from Charlie is, can you use different weld vendors like Lincoln or Fronius? I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, we can. Um, we're actually working on finalizing the Lincoln interface for the PowerWave platform. Uh, we haven't done a lot with Fronius, but we can certainly work to that end if, if a customer 
has the need or desire to be on the Fernius platform versus anything else. Okay, thank you. Kind of put a plea out for any last final questions. Obviously, if you think of something after the webinar is over, you can reach out to Steve, or I think most of you know Ben at NEF, you can reach out to him, or you can connect with me and I can put you in touch with the appropriate party so that we can get your questions answer answered and help you determine if this is a good fit for your organization. Um, so with that, um, there is still time to go ahead and put questions in, but in light of everybody's time, I'm going to go ahead and just do our survey real quick. If you would like to answer the few questions that come up, it just helps us know how we did today and how we can serve you better in the future. And we do have another question that came through. What does the learning curve look like for these units? So typically, I would say most customers it's going to be a manual welder that actually does the programming. Um, we send out all the training manuals and everything before the system arrives so that they'll, they'll familiarize themselves with uh, that information. And then usually within a day, they're already writing production programs and running production. We'll have some that take a little bit longer, but that's usually around uh, more complicated parts um, or some fixturing issues, those kinds of things. And we've worked through those issues with them, whether it's weld process development or kind of helping solve any of those application issues from tooling or, or part fit up remotely over the phone. But within a week, pretty much everybody's been up in operation and running. Okay, thank you. We are still open for questions. We do still have some time left. So please take advantage of this opportunity to get your questions answered. The survey is still open and running. Thank you for those that have already answered that. I'll take this opportunity to thank Steve for your time and this information today. Ben at NEF and John at NEF for partnering with us and TMA for partnering with us uh, to present this series. We do have another question that just came through. What are some of the most common limitations you come up against when looking at an application? I would say that the two most common ones would be uh, part geometry itself as far as like joint fit up and inconsistencies there. So just kind of manual processing on the upstream side of it that doesn't necessarily make it a great fit for uh, automation without a, a tremendous amount of sensing to be able to try and accomplish the task. And then the other one is parts that inherently need uh, coordinated motion to be able to weld. So parts that you really need to be able to be manipulating them around to be able to keep the weld in position as you're welding it. Um, and that's not necessarily a great fit for us. We don't have external access support or coordinated motion. Um, so that's another one of those kind of good applications on the traditional side of it for uh, those types of things. Thank you. Another question is, what are the top maintenance concerns? Really, the maintenance side of it is going to be about the same as a, a manual weld setup. You're going to need to do all of the, the contact tip, gas nozzle, liner, um, blow out the welder, those kinds of tasks that you would on a, a manual side as well. For the cobot itself, there's really not a lot of maintenance involved in it. Um, all of the joints are permanently lubricated. So you don't have any of those types of oiling or greasing maintenance intervals. Um, if you get to the point that you're out far enough in hours that joints need to be replaced, each of the joints can be replaced individually, um, but certainly not necessarily a, a maintenance task, more of a service issue as you get out into the tens of thousands of hours. Um, but yeah, there really isn't a lot of maintenance that's necessary from a day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month kind of side of things for the, the cobot itself. Okay, thank you. We do still have a few minutes. These are great questions. Um, so if anyone else has any other questions, please go ahead and put those in now so we can get them answered before our time is up with Steve. And again, the survey is still out to um, and available if you'd like to answer those few questions that we have. We do have, as I said, the next session in this series that we put together is on February 16th at 10 a.m. and that is de-risking robotic installations with easy to use software. 
you can register for that and any other trainings and events that you might need at www.nwrc.org. You can jump on there and go ahead and register. Or you can contact me and I can help you get registered. Again, want to thank everyone for joining us. We do have a last question in here. Is there any annual software maintenance fee or licensing fee? No, we don't have any ongoing fees for our system at all. We really, really believe in that all in system price that once you've purchased it, it's yours. We do release software updates. Um, so any of the, the software changes will release those for free. And then there are some upgrades that we'll make um, that are retrofitable, that there may be a cost associated to those, but it's typically a hardware addition uh, if, if that was elected, but certainly nothing required to be able to uh, keep using the system from a monthly or annual contract type basis. Okay, thank you. We do have about two minutes left. So again, I'll invite anyone to ask any questions, um, but I'll put it out to Steve, Ben, or John, if you have, in light of the questions that were asked, if you have any you know, additional thoughts or comments that you'd like to make for the group, you can go ahead and do so now. No, Molly, I just want, no one thanked you. So thank you for helping organize this. I thought it was really, did a really nice job. And Steve, that was very informative. It was probably one of the better case studies that I've seen over the years um, on an application. So nice job. Appreciate it, Ben. Yes, I agree with you, Ben, and, and thank you for <laughs> the accolades. Um, <laughs> So, but we appreciate everyone's time to be here with us today. Again, if you have any further questions, Steve's information is on the screen now. Reach out to Ben or John at Neff or contact me and I'll put you in touch with the right party so that we can get your questions answered. Finally, just one last thank you to everyone for joining us um, and spending the time with us today. I think this was a pretty valuable and informative quick little webinar. Um, so hopefully you all found it as valuable and hopefully we'll see you on the next webinar on February 16th. So I'll leave it open for another minute if anybody has any questions, um, but just thanks and I hope everyone has a great day.